So I hope you all had your first coffee. We're going to start off with a little game of association. See how awake you are. So what do these three things have in common? Guitars, snowshoes, Q400. Instruments of choice. They are the instruments of choice for turboprop flying in North America. And why can we say that? Well, we've got 61 Q series operators in North America, 483 Q series turboprops operating, and 87% of all turboprop ASMs are flown by the Q series. That's a pretty phenomenal track. Now you're getting the gist of things, go to number two. What do these things have in common? You might know the chap on the left, and you may not know Carrie Price in the middle, and you may not know, well, you do know the CRJ uh, uh, 900 on the side. These are all MVP performers. MVP performers. CR, uh, CRJ series is the MVP of regional aviation in North America. It has created the new market segment. It is right-sizing tool for the, uh, for the airlines in terms of profitability, and it is the best-selling regional aircraft in history. It is the fourth most successful aircraft, commercial aircraft, in aviation history. Think about that. The fourth most successful commercial aircraft in aviation history. 737, 320, DC-9980, CRJ. In terms of total number sold. What do these have in common? You might recognize the city up in the left, middle, and on the right. Cleveland, CN Tower, in the C series. They all start with the letter C. <laughs> Not too complicated. <laughs> <laughs> so it is, uh, it is the uh, C series offers unmatched capability uh, for the airline business model in North America. It has the most personal living space, comfort, than any other uh, uh, single aisle out there. It has coast-to-coast -coast range, so truly a coast-to-coast -coast aircraft, and is very cost-effective. 50% lower cost, uh, cash off the cost. <coughs> so those are the brain teasers for today, so now we're gonna move on to a little more, <coughs> more uh, uh, generic stuff. So how did we shape the industry? So here's a map of 2000. That's the North American route structure for Bomber J aircraft flown in 2000. Have a look at 2015. Amazing. Over 200,000 monthly flights with Bomber J aircraft. 25% of all departures. One takes off every 12 seconds. Not bad. These are the operators that do that every day, day in, day out. 88 operators for, and it includes Latin America as well, too, but just under 1,750 airplanes flying in the Americas today. And of course, Todd supports those every day, day in, day out. <coughs> So let's just turn to our recent sales successes we've had. <clears throat> so you see Horizon, Alaska up here on the left, they've come back and uh, re-upped their order again after numerous uh, option exercises. Now they will have 54 Q400s flying in the Northwest. 54 Q400s. To the far right, we have GCAS, arguably the world's largest leasing company. Uh, they come in and ordered uh, uh, the Q400 on a speculative basis. So they, we will work together with them and place those aircraft. So that's a real uh, uh, support uh, from GCAS supporting the Q400. You might recognize the bottom left is Jazz, Air Canada Express, Jazz Express. Uh, they've come back and ordered up to 23 more Q400. This is just recently. And then you have American on the right, uh, as was mentioned earlier. Uh, they ordered 24 uh, to go into their fleet of 30 today, plus Jonathan 7. So another 31 to the 30 that they have already sold. 61 CRJs just for America in the last couple of years. <clears throat> so very, very successful. So these are just the total numbers. Give you a flavor. Over 1,200 Q series sold, just under 1,900 CRJs, and about 250 uh, C series. So just now a little bit on the products. That was kind of the, the, the lead in and the pitch. Now a little bit on what do we do? What do we do? Uh, we continue to invest in the platform to make it the most cost effective and sought after and desired aircraft uh, family of them. So you have the CRJ 700 on the left, lowest trip cost. You have the 900 for optimized profitable growth. And you have the CRJ 1000 for the best seat mile cost in the industry for regional products. So talking the same theme of continually investing in the platform, you know, all we, we do every day is we try to lower the cost for the operators. Lower the cost for the operators and turn to the majors. 
So in 2007, you'll see here, in terms of improvement of fuel burn, we've uh, in, in, introduced the next gen. And the next gen, if you notice the picture down below, was actually was the introduction of the wing extension, uh, the plank extension, plus the canting of the wing. So uh, uh, we're well ahead of the market in that. The other guys are catching up on that now, where you uh, increase the lift and you uh, reduce fuel burn. Uh, also, there's the cabin adjustments, the larger windows, the new interior, the LED lighting, the larger bins, all now included, as Jonathan preferred, uh, referred to as the minor adjustments. These are fairly major. Uh, and then you have uh, weight saving uh, all over the airplane, conic nozzles for fuel uh, benefit, and slat, uh, slat optimization for drag and approach, and, and, uh, and, and wing arrow and evolutionary and movement. So uh, all in all, today we deliver to American and to Jonathan and to Delta 5.5% uh, uh, lower fuel burden than uh, the first uh, introduced to CRJ. And the, the program is going to take us to 2020, where we expect to see double-digit, 10-plus percent fuel burn reduction over the first uh, introduced airplane. So that's continual investment in the platform. Jonathan, if we can help your bottom line even more, take it to America. So there's the, the cost leader, 10% COC advantage, uh, lightweight design, arrow, and maintenance intervals. So increasing the maintenance intervals, again, under Todd's uh, direction and leadership, uh, reducing the cost uh, to maintain there. So, just touching on scope a little bit, you know, scope today is limited to 76 seats, but also to 86,000 pounds gross takeoff weight. 86,000 pounds gross takeoff weight. So, uh, some of the other industry players uh, 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 have the airplanes that are a little bit heavier than that, so until scope moves, uh, they won't really deal with the climate nation. However, you have the CRJ-1000 here, which was anticipating the market shift in scope, and of course it seats up to 104 uh, passengers, but uh, uh, it's ready and available today, and so when scope moves, now the, the, the majors are in negotiations with their pilots, uh, we are ready and available to, to take advantage of that. And what does it offer? Commonality. It's the same crew as the 200, the 700, the 900, and the 1000. Same uh, maintenance philosophy, and not, the 1000 enjoys the same engine as the 7900 and the 1000, same engine. So uh, a very, very high degree of commonality uh, for the airline, of course, reducing cost again. So it has the best economics in the business. Okay, uh, just shifting gears to the 400 a little bit. Again, continually investing in the platform. 500, Q400 order was taken uh, this year. Uh, we delivered the first, uh, car or the first cargo combi sale and the first extra capacity entry into service aircraft, first flyby LCY interop operation as London City, the Stoleport in London, in England, and then the first lessor uh, GCAT fine spec order. So at the same time, we introduced the fuel efficiency manual, uh, showing the operators how they can uh, reduce fuel burn by up to 15%. So phenomenal. You saw this different, uh, the slides previously about working on fuel burn. This is just operating technique to reduce fuel burn, and we've issued a uh, a fuel efficiency manual so that the operators can understand how to benefit from that and take it all the way to the bank. You have ADSB out, uh, again, avionics. There, the, uh, the EC is extra capacity and CC is cargo combi. Uh, those retrofits are available to add value to the platform for residual value. And of course, that's what lessor is like. You know, you can have multiple uh, onward sales and leases as well, too. And we've introduced local Wi Fi uh, for the uh, communication. So just an example of where the 400 can really complement jet fleets. Jet fleets. All these operators have 737s. Air Baltic, WestJet, Knock Air, Alaska, all have a substantial number of 737s. They have chosen the Q400 to complement their 737 operations because they can use it in off-peak hours, where they can hub feed, develop new routes, low volume routes, increase frequency, and network expansion. It's an ideal complement <coughs> through the 737 and uh, Airbus products. Okay, not to be it, but you have the four choices. You have the single class, which uh, offered today, you have the dual class, extra capacity, and combi. You have four choices to make the platform more valuable. More capacity, true business class, uh, with upfront uh, business class, and you have the uh, premium economy, and economy. You have the 86 c low cost differentiator that Knock Air purchased and is flying. And then you also have the, the cargo combi version as well, too. That adds value to the operators. Uh, so why is the 400 so ideally suited for the North American market? 
because the average capacity of the seating capacity is increasing. Here you go. So the number of seats per departure from 2006 onwards. You can see from 2006 to 2015, the average departure has increased by 10 seats. So if you extrapolate that along that line, that means when you get up to 2025, the average departure will have 75 seats. So the 400 is ideally suited to capture that. And you'll see here uh, where the bandwidth is uh, in that zone to capture up to 86 seats. Okay, so moving, uh, just finishing off with the C-Series. I'd like to introduce Rob Dewar, he's not here with us today, but he's our VPGM for the C-Series program, and he will, uh, through a video, give you a short update on stuff that was filmed on Friday. So you have the most recent and up-to-date uh, information on the C-Series. <laughs> Vice President of C-Series here in Middle, give you a quick update on the, uh, the C-Series program. So as you can see, uh, you will see lots of activity in the C-Series. Uh, we've now accumulated uh, over 1,600 hours in the flight test program. Uh, we have six aircraft in the program. So I'll go through and give you an update on uh, each one of the flight test vehicles. Starting with FDB-1, actually just completed doing uh, the artificial ice shapes. So basically, how that works is we bond foam on the leading uh, surfaces and actually uh, CPL the aircraft handle, so those are completed and that, that's really good to have behind us. That leads into the activities of FDB2, which actually uh, just completed now the uh, natural icing test. So the difference is that on FDB2, we actually go look for extreme icing conditions, try to build up the ice, watch how the system performs, and also validate the handling of the aircraft. Also FDB2 uh, just completed as well the uh, high altitude operations in Colorado, Again, these are to test the extreme envelopes of the aircraft and uh, check out the full envelope at these high altitudes. And again, those tests uh, are successfully completed now. So uh, after we three, uh, as you know, dedicated the system tests. Uh, the last month, been really focusing on the autopilot testing and also the flight management system, FMS uh, testing. Again, those are all progressing uh, well. Uh, the fourth aircraft, the be 4 has been focusing and uh, progressing on all performance testing. Again, uh, as we mentioned before, cruise is finished, uh, cruise performance. Uh, we've also done the low speed now, and uh, now we're going to be focusing on the actual runway performance. On FDB-5, uh, that's the aircraft with the full interior installed, and uh, it has started the flight test program, as you know, actually back in, uh, in March. Well, we finished the initial handling, and now we've also finished all the uh, electromagnetic interference and the high intensity uh, uh, field tests. And again, uh, those are all completed. CS-300 already completed over 100 uh, flight hours, uh, performing very well. We've completed the initial handling and also we've done uh, quite a bit of work on that aircraft. And again, flies just like the CS-100, so uh, uh, really good progress. So in summary, uh, really solid progress on the CSER program uh, with 1,600 hours, including the flight test program, and over 70% of the certification activities are now completed. And most importantly, the results look really encouraging, so uh, that's great news. Um, very important, uh, two announcements, very significant to the program. First one is uh, having uh, Swiss as our launch operator. We're very proud to have them uh, to uh, be the launch operator. They're very strong technically, and of course, they're probably the best position in the industry to have a successful EAS, so that was great news. Uh, second uh, good news is that we're going to be coming to Paris with the C-Series. Uh, it'll be great to show up our product in, at the air show. And uh, basically we'll be coming on following that to Zurich uh, to celebrate with uh, the Swiss, our partner, uh, have a chance to show them the aircraft uh, in, uh, in real. So basically stay tuned, uh, follow us on cseries.com. Thank you. So that's uh, Bombardier continually investing in uh, aviation and advancing our uh, industry. So it's 100% new aircraft, 50% COC advantage, Offer substantial savings over and above what you offer by what's available today. Seven to twelve million dollars is twelve thousand pounds lighter. Fifteen hundred pounds of weight is about one percent fuel burn. So do the math. It's in, that's why the airplane provides twenty percent fuel burn advantage. It's a star. Stay tuned. Okay, I'd like to introduce Mr. Todd Young, please. So Todd. Uh,